Oh no, not another YouTuber that does some ridiculous challenge only to fail miserably. If that's what you thought when opening this video, no worries, it's not that bad. <coughs> What's up everybody, I am Xerxes, you're in my workshop and today we are speed painting Death Guard Combat Patrol. This time, however, we're doing a bit of a challenge, because I'll be painting my moldy boys without an airbrush. So we're going old school with spray guns and brushes. I'll be using my wet palette and a few other things that I'm going to mention throughout the video. I don't own the actual box, and if I had pre-ordered it, I'd still be waiting for it. And I have our customs officer, so thank for that. I'm still waiting for my codex, data cards, the fortification, and Lord of Virulence, by the way. I do have all the minis, however, so I can show you how I painted them. To keep my workflow organized, I divided the minis into two groups based on their shared elements, paints, and techniques. So the first group consists of poxwalkers, obviously and the other one consists of well, the rest of the minis. I decided to lump Plague Marines, Biologos and Typhus uh, together because I can batch paint all the elements that they share and then leave the extra bits on both characters till the very end. I also want to kind of uh, one-up guy from uh, Midwinter Minis. He shows you solid basics in a fantastic way, so instead of doing exactly the same thing, I want to show you a way to experiment with slightly different techniques and use several auxiliaries to hopefully create some interesting effects without taking the financial leap of buying an airbrush. Whether I succeed at doing so, well, it's up to you. Let's start with poxwalkers. I set them up on pieces of XPS board and spray them with oregano green and give them a zenithal highlight of pure white. Both paints are from Montana Paints range. And since it was minus 15 degrees Celsius outside at the time, I decided to spray those little adorable smiley zombies in my garage. I was doing it in the evening, so filming conditions were less than optimal to say the least. I set them up and left them to dry for about 24 hours. I don't know if it's just me, but there is always that 10% of the minis in every batch that just refuse to get stuck into the bases, no matter how much glue you end up using on them. All power armor wearing marines were base coated with Euskadi green, and I gave them a zenithal highlight of oregano green. The major shortcut that we're taking here is using the right colors of spray paints that will form the base coat for our minis. It's nothing new or revolutionary about this method, but the zenithal adds a highlight and introduces a little bit of graininess to the models, giving them an extra texture. It won't work with every army or paint scheme, but it's perfect for Death Guard. Now I can only tint the flesh of Poxwalkers by using Vallejo Gamer Dead Flesh mixed with Airbrush Flow Improver and Glaze Medium. The proportions are two parts paint, one part Flow Improver and one part Glaze Medium for Airbrush Ready and Scale 75 range paints. And two parts paint, two parts Flow Improver, one part Glaze Medium for other non-airbrush paints. This is my personal substitute for GW Contrast Paints, and it's the mix I'll be using throughout the video. Uh, there is no need for fine accuracy here, so I apply the paint with a size 10 chunky brush. Next step is to paint all the bones with Vallejo Gamer Bone White. Since I had bone white on the palette, I used a makeup brush to stipple some highlights on the skin. 
let's differentiate those tentacles that some of those guys have. To do that, I use a mix of a Vallejo game a Warlord Purple and a Vallejo game a Alien Purple in equal proportions. I paint all the tentacles and then I add some bone white to the mix to create a sort of in-between color and I do a stipple blend to reduce harsh lines between the colors of the flesh and the colors of the tentacles. It won't be as smooth as one applied with an airbrush, but it'll do a decent job. I also stipple some Vallejo game color earth on the tips of all the bones to age them a bit. The remains of clothes that these guys are wearing were painted with scale 75 black and stippled with Vallejo signal blue to give them a slight bluish tint. Spilling guts were painted with Vallejo model color burnt red and the leather elements were painted with scale 75 brown leather. And to finish the base coating step, I painted all metal elements like weapons, spikes and mechanical arms with Vallejo metal color steel. I started the shading process with a little bit of green. I wanted to give those guys that weren't blessed with tentacles some extra differentiation on their limbs. Leather and bone were shaded with brown. Flesh was shaded with a mix of magenta and brown. And all the fabric and metal elements were shaded with black. And a couple of hours later, excess wash was removed with a makeup brush dipped in mineral spirits. I gave mineral spirits some time to evaporate and I began the highlighting process. I started with scale 75 light skin and I applied it to flesh, guts and tentacles where I felt they needed some highlights. Also, I gave the fabric a light dry brush of scale 75 Caspian Blue. Time for a few finishing touches to give these guys a bit more character. I start by painting all the pus and boils with Nurgle's Rot. Despite my ongoing aversion to GW paints, I still use some of them but it's a very narrow selection used for very specific purposes. I want my horde of zombies to hold rusted weaponry and equipment. To do that, I use three paints. Typhus Corrosion to add extra texture and Dark Rust and Light Rust washes from Soilworks. Unfortunately, I end up spilling my Light Rust wash and uh, losing about half of it. I do believe that the technical term for this phenomenon is the curse of the paint pot. The gods of paint job always demand a sacrifice. And if you don't comply, you'll end up messing up your minis and hating yourself forever. I quickly apply my homemade flock mix that I use for my Garden of Nurgle board and paint the rims of the bases black. Oh, one final touch. I apply white to the eyeballs. With the chaff finished, I could move on to the bubonic Astartes. I started by covering whole armor with scale 75 Ardennes green. I decided to deal with the most annoying elements at the very beginning. So, I painted the trim on the armor with a mix of Vallejo metal color copper and gold in equal proportions. Then, 
I painted all chainmail, spikes, chains and exhausts with Vallejo metal colored steel. Typhus's armor has metal trim instead of brass, so I painted that with Vallejo model color steel too. Next step is bone. I used a slightly different technique this time. I base coated all bone elements and the hive on Typhus's back with Vallejo game color khaki. Then I dry brushed them with Vallejo Gamer Bone White and a little bit of Pure White as a final highlight. Fabric was base coated with Vallejo Model Color Burnt Red. I paint all the tabards and the cape on the champion. As you can see, I'm trying to keep my paint selection fairly limited. There is no need to go crazy with 10 million different paints. To add a little bit of a highlight, I lighten burnt red with a little bit of bone white and I paint the raised areas of fabrics. I make use of the burnt red and bone white mix to paint all the fleshy bits. We're talking tentacles and flesh tubes that cover the wires. Then I use a scale 75 light skin to apply highlights. I'm working off the initial highlights that I placed with the spray guns. After that I move to the mechanical tubes that I base coat with Vallejo Model Air Pale Blue Grey and then wash with a slightly watered down black ink. All wooden elements were covered with several thin layers of scale 75 ink tense wood. I don't really want to question their stylistic choices but having wooden gun case right next to extremely hot supercharged plasma is a health and safety risk in my books. Trying to be as efficient as possible, I referred to my tried and trusted leather painting method. Step 1. Base coat with khaki. Step 2. Dry brush with bone white. Step 3. Layer with a thinned down sepia ink. Step 4. Dry brush with bone white again. Step 5. Layer with thinned down sepia ink again. Visors and exposed wires were painted with scale 75 Antares Red. Green undercoat worked surprisingly well and I achieved a very rich color after applying only one layer. To add a little bit of uh, highlight to the visors, I painted them with scale 75 Mars Orange. I grabbed Vallejo Signal Blue again and I painted all fly elements on Plague Marines both ice and mandibles. Then I painted all the bottles on the Biologus racks as well as the smoke coming out of Typhus's hive and obviously the slime coming out of various bottles and orifices. To give slime a more disgusting feel I covered it with Nurgle's rot. To finish off the smoke, I stippled some pale blue-grey to the raised areas. Then it was time to work on that swarm of flies. I painted their bodies with black ink and their wings with pure white. There was no need to go super crazy with them. Open wounds on Biologus's body were painted with Vallejo Game Color Filthy Brown and then layered with Vallejo Gamer Gold Yellow.
plasma coils were covered with one quick layer of Vallejo Warlord Purple. I quickly painted all the weapons with Vallejo Metal Color Steel, did a quick dry brush of Vallejo Metal Color Silver and applied one layer of Typhus Corrosion to all metal elements. Then I could proceed to the shading step. To properly shade my Buboni Gastartes I prepared three oil washes. A dark military green, similar to Athonian camo shade, was applied to armor and smoke on Typhus. Dark brown, similar to Army Painter's Strong Tone, was applied to bone, leather and brass elements. And finally, dark magenta was used on fabric and fleshy bits. Unfortunately, I ran out of memory, so here's footage of me reapplying the same wash on poxwalkers. I also applied the same rust effects on all weapons. Now, to finish off with some magic on the bases. And the whole combat patrol is complete. 9 hours on poxwalkers and 11 hours on plague marines, biologus and typhus. Challenge successful. There is a catch, however. I did not paint them in one sitting. They were painted in about two weeks or so. I spent between one and three hours each day painting them up. Crunch time painting is fun for YouTube videos, but not necessarily very useful for an average hobbyist. So, can you paint Death Guard Combat Patrol in 20 hours? Yes, without any problems but make sure that you do it bit by bit every day and paint when you feel refreshed and willing to do so. That way you'll be as efficient as possible. So that's it for today. Share, like and subscribe for the glory of the almighty algorithm. And I'll see you in the next one.